This week in Jamaica Now. Reviewing week one of the West Kingston Commission of Inquiry. Community activist Lloyd Diaguilar is thrown out. Witnesses clash with police attorneys. A university lecturer concerned that the adversarial nature of the Tivoli inquiry could affect how much truth is unearthed. PNP councillor says she won't be intimidated after being shot at on a work site. And law student ponders taking the University of Technology back to court over exam barring. The details of these and other stories coming up after the break. On behalf of the Gleaner family, Team Blue, we would like to wish you and yours a happy holiday. Thank you for your support of the Gleaner for over 180 years. I'm Carleen Brown and this is Jamaica Now. There were tense moments last week as the West Kingston Commission of Inquiry got underway. In the first four days of the inquiry, eight witnesses were called. Among them was 54-year-old Granville Roy Johnson. He told the commission that he was shot in the back by a soldier as he retreated to a friend's house during the police military operation. Johnson would become impassioned during cross-examination as he accused JDF attorney Peter Champigny of trying to outsmart him into answering questions in favor of the attorney. Another witness, Kishona Gordon, says her stepfather was shot by soldiers on May 24, 2010, and shortly after, she too was shot by a soldier. Gordon says while in hospital after the shooting, the soldier visited her and said he wasn't trying to kill her, but was instead trying to slow her down as she looked like a boy from the community. And Gordon lost her temper after continuous questioning from attorneys representing the security forces about how she knew it was soldiers who shot her and her stepfather. And there also was more heat on Thursday as JCF attorney Deborah Martin cross-examined Tivoli resident Maurice Tomlinson. Tomlinson was abrupt when Martin questioned him about extradited crime lord Christopher Koch. At one stage, the commission's chairman, Sir David Simmons, had to intervene and pose the questions to Tomlinson instead. Meanwhile, attorney Valerie Nita Robertson says witnesses were not forthcoming because they fear gangsters. And lecturer at the University of the West Indies, Dr. Jermaine McAlpin, says he is concerned the adversarial nature of the Tivoli inquiry could affect how much truth is unearthed in the process. He was speaking on Television Jamaica's current affairs program, All Angles. The reality of it is that if it is guided by the stipulations of the terms of reference, etc., I don't think we're going to get much truth if it's going to be adversarial. That is part of the reason why commissions of inquiry and truth commissions are often chosen over trials. They are supposed to get qualitatively more information, but if they are that adversarial, I'm not sure the quality of the information will increase. And human rights lobby group Jamaicans for Justice, JFJ, says lawyers at the West Kingston Commission of Inquiry should be more sensitive and respectful towards witnesses. I recognize that the lawyers who are representing the JCF, the JDF, and any other interest have a job to do. But I think that in their questioning, it is best that an approach which is sensitive and respectful, even as they seek to, to test the evidence being given, that that approach is one that should be adopted. Meanwhile, convener of the Tivoli Committee, Lloyd Diaguilar, says he's considering his legal options after he was thrown out of the Tivoli Commission of Inquiry. Diaguilar was evicted after a second day of verbal clashes with lawyers and the commission's chairman. He had complained that lawyers for security forces were being harsh in their cross-examination of witnesses and asked that the chairman intervene. There were testy exchanges on day one, but the situation escalated on day two. Diaguilar was objecting to how witnesses were being treated, but was again stopped in his tracks. The chairman warned him of being evicted, but he continued to interrupt, forcing Sir David to order that he be thrown out. That is what you're thinking at this And 
And there have been mixed reactions from some Jamaicans about the Tivoli Commission of Inquiry, which is probing the May 2010 police military operation in Tivoli Gardens. Some followers on the Gleaners' Facebook page said they believe that the inquiry is a waste of time and money and that nothing meaningful will come from the exercise. Others were of the view that the rest of the country will get a detailed account about what happened during the incursion. Meanwhile, Chairman of the Tivoli Commission of Inquiry, Sir David Simmons, said the objective of the exercise must be to ensure that the events of May 2010 are not repeated. It will be our hope that at the conclusion of the inquiry, enough lessons will have been learnt to provide a peaceful way forward for the people of West Kingston. You know, it remains a truism that those who fail to learn from the mistakes of history are doomed to repeat them. In other news, the House Speaker Michael Peart has ruled that Prime Minister Portia Simpson Miller should provide to the Parliament all documents related to the National Housing Trust's purchase of the Outermany property in Trelawney. Responding to questions in the Parliament, Mrs. Simpson Miller said the government will release all information on the matter to the Office of the Contractor General and the Auditor General's Department, which have both launched investigations into the deal. However, Leader of the Opposition Andrew Holness argued that the Outermany purchase is a matter of great public interest, and so the Prime Minister must come clean with the country. Mr. But there is no way that the Parliament of Jamaica requesting this information from the Prime Minister could in any way place a danger an investigation being done by the Auditor General, the Contractor General. Mr. Mr. Speaker, I, I ask you to give a direction to this House, to the Prime Minister, for such documents to be made available to the opposition and to the public. Leader of Government Business Philip Paulwell objected, saying that it would be inappropriate to release the documents. But the House Speaker disagreed, saying all the documents which the government plans to hand over to the OCG and the AGD must be provided to the Parliament. University of Technology UTech law student Duke Foote says he's considering going back to court to challenge the decision of the University of Technology to bar him from sitting examinations. Foote says the disbarment came as a surprise as he had been informed by the university that he was a student in good standing. The law student says when he turned up for his first exam, he was presented with a blank exam card and was told he could not sit any exams. He's accusing the university of victimization arising from his court action against the institution. Councillor for the Papine Division in St. Andrew, Venetia Phillips, says work will continue on a sidewalk construction project in the area despite a gun attack over work distribution. Phillips says while on a visit to the project site, shots were fired in her direction. The first two shots that I heard, um, the trees directly behind me started to, 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 you could hear contact with the trees. Okay. So I got down and I indicated the person to, go, to get down, but I stepped out from my position in order to be able to, well, in an attempt to get out of the way and look down the road only to see a young man standing just across there in a black top with a gun in his hand pointing it up there. The persons were on the other side of the road and they were never in danger because he was never firing on that side of the road. He was firing in the direction where I was standing. She says she went to the area after receiving several complaints about the distribution of the work to build a sidewalk and a retaining wall. Phillips says the matter is being handled by the police, but she will not allow criminals to stop the work project. Jamaica's Aaliyah Atkinson last week shattered her national record to win the silver medal in the women's 50-meter breaststroke final at the 2014 FINA World Short Course Swimming Championships in Doha. The 25-year-old Olympian clocked 28.91 seconds to improve on her previous national record of 28.94 seconds. Lithuania's Ruta Melutite beat Atkinson in 28.84 seconds. And that's it for this edition of Jamaica Now, your weekly review of the big news stories. Send us your comments at online feedback at gleanerjm.com. You may tune in to Power 106 FM for regular updates. Follow us on Twitter at Jamaica Gleaner and on Facebook at Gleaner Jamaica. I'm Carlene Brown, and as we go, we bring you pictorial highlights from the Tivoli Commission of Inquiry, which is being held at the Jamaica Conference Center. Yes, sir. Yes, black and blue. I call his number, I don't get his answer. So what you do? I stay in the house till you look after, I hear some 
crowd making knives. Mm -hmm. Them people making knives outside. And you know much I got a reach at hospital after seven. I put a dead down a separate. And the thing you lost. Yes. That's all you're interested in. I'm interested in the people that will lose a loved one and we get gunshot to get my compensation. Were you at the intersection of Sangster Crescent and Mackenzie Drive? Looking over Rasta City? No, sir. No, sir. Okay. Did you ever see the wall? That them tell us that them dig up and find bone and the policeman. You ever look at that wall? When we come back and I fix up my house. When, 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 when was this that you were alleged? Well, I get it from him. Yeah, 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 we're not going to lie. We see yes. The, yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yeah. He has answered. You see yes. that wall? Yeah, man. Yeah, they said a bit bigger. When you saw that wall? When I come back? Yeah. Yes. And when I choke on my belly and I sit down, I feel like water running down from where? From my stomach to my stomach.